Welcome to the final top 10 competition for the second ever Geo Elite Geography Tournament featured today this evening on YouTube. I'm your co-host Warren Huang from the state of Washington. And I'm your co-host Siddharth Chitapuram from the state of California. Today, this tournament is brought to you by the Geo Elite team, encouraging geographic learning since 2020. And we're partnered with the GeoEd Foundation, a nonprofit organization promoting geographic education and learning. Let's get started now by meeting our top 10 finalists. First up, from the state of Iowa, we have Nirmal Malam. And next, from the Peach State of Georgia, we have Anish Raja. And next, from Virginia, we have Caleb Hines. From the heart of the Dairyland in Wisconsin, we have Harry Jin. Next up, from Louisiana, we have Andrew Minigar. From my own home state of Washington, the Evergreen State, next up is Lakshya Vagaru. From the state of Connecticut in New England, we have Roman Gagliardi. And next up from Missouri, we have Max Yang. From the Atlantic coasts of North Carolina, we have Vaibhav Hariram. And last but not least, we have from the state of Texas, Ashmith Kambala. Congrats to all of you for making it this far already in this winter's semi-annual GeoLeet Geography Tournament. Let's first get an overview now of how the competition will work. The first 10 rounds will consist of a multitude of individual and common questions. Contestants will have an opportunity to earn up to 44 points in the first 10 rounds of the competition. After round 10, we will eliminate four contestants and the remaining six survivors will carry over their scores and have an additional five rounds to be able to earn up to another total of 22 points. At the end of round 15, two more contestants will leave us and the last four Geo Elite finalists will advance into a special Geo, Geo Elite round for round 16. Finally, after the conclusion of round 16, we will take our top two competitors who will advance to the championship round and determine this winter's Geo Elite Geography Tournament champion. Sounds good? Okay, let's now move on to the rules. Our contestants will have 12 seconds to answer each question, both common and individual. During individual questions, both of the contestants' hands must be up the entire time. They'll receive a warning and then disqualification if they do not abide by these rules. During a group question, everyone's camera must be adjusted so that one hand is shown writing an answer while the other is covering the answer. As well, our pictures are both either under Creative Commons license or from NASA. So we are strictly within the boundaries for copyright laws and our sources will be linked in the description box down below. In the event of a tie during an elimination within the competition, we will take the participants' qualifying scores to determine who will move on in the competition. Just a reminder, please subscribe to Geo Elite if you like our content and if you would like to sign up for the next Geo Elite tournament happening during summer break of this year. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Geo Elite International. We'd also like to remind you to sign up for the virtual GeoEd retreat coming this February. It's a great way to expand your geographic knowledge, learn from the successes of past National Geographic Bee champions, and gain more experience for future GeoLeet geography tournaments. A full overview of the retreat will be put in the description box down below, as well as a sign-up form if you're interested in participating within this unique learning opportunity. Finally, if you would like to sign up for the next GeoLeet tournament happening this summer, just send us an email at geoleteam at gmail.com and we will respond within 72 hours. With all that out of the way, let's get started with the competition. Here are the current standings with all of our top 10 competitors. Nothing has happened yet so far, but that will change very soon once we get started with the first question. 
on our, on our leaderboard, the green represents the safe zone, where the contestants who place in the top six will advance into the next phase of the top 10 competition, while the red represents the danger zone, where the bottom placing four contestants at the end of round 10 will be eliminated from the Ge GeoLeap Geography Tournament. Let's see how things play out, and we will move on to round one. Let's get started with the first set of questions. So round one is called Settler Sighting. This round will test your knowledge on world cities, towns, and tourist destinations that are located globally. Each question will be worth one point. You will have 12 seconds to answer your question with both of your hands up and ready within the view of the camera. So let's begin with Nirmal. Serving as the gateway to the Red Cliffs at the Dioso Gorge, the city of Pointe Noire is the essential center of the oil industry in which French-speaking African country? The Republic of the Congo. That is correct. Now on to Anish. Known for its six Baroque era fountains that date back to the 17th century, the city of Olomouc, located at the confluence of the Bistris and Morava rivers, was the historical capital of the easternmost province in which landlocked European country. Czech Republic. That is correct. Now on to Caleb. Located about halfway between Lake Rukwa and Lake Malawi, the city of Mbeya was originally founded as a gold mining town in which African country? Tanzania. Tanzania is correct. Now on to Harry. Lying near the convergence of the Napo and Amazon rivers, the town of Francisco de Orellana offers breathtaking nature and wildlife tours that take place just south of the border with Colombia in which South American country? Ecuador. I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Peru. Now on to Andrew. At about 2,200 meters above sea level, the town of Korug on the eastern bank of the Panj River is part of the historical Badakhshan region in which Central Asian country? What is, or sorry, uh, Afghanistan? I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Tajikistan. Next up is Lakshya. Becoming one of the last frontiers for American forces liberating countries from Imperial Japan, General Santos City was founded by the nomadic Blaan people on the southernmost major island of which archipelagic Asian country? The Philippines. That is correct. And now on to Roman. Inhabited for over 6,000 years on the eastern bank of the Rhine River, the city of Shan was once part of the ancient Roman province of Raetia and is the current industrial and transportation center for which European microstate? Uh, Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein is correct. Now on to Max. Protected by the protected by 18th century seafront ramparts known as the Scala de la Caspa, the port city of Esarwira is known for its excellent windsurfing and kite surfing conditions, which attracts international visitors to the western shoreline of which North African country. Uh, am I allowed for a repeat? To ask for a repeat? Sure. You have, and by the way, you have two repeats for that entire competition, everyone. Protected by 18th century seafront ramparts known as the Scala de la Caspa, the port city of Esauira is known for its excellent windsurfing and kite surfing conditions, which attracts international visitors to the western shoreline of which North African country? Tunisia. I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Morocco. Next up is Vybov. The site for the birthplace of the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, the city of Gori, was founded as a Hellenistic settlement 
at the confluence of the Kura and Greater Liakvi rivers in which country? Uh, Georgia, the country of Georgia. Yes, that is correct. And finally, Ashmit. Serving as the largest population center on the island of Gonav, Ans à Galais lies across a narrow channel from the city of Saint Marc on the mainland of which North American island country? Haiti. Haiti is correct. All right. We're ready to get onto the next slide. Let's do that. And standings have adjusted. Let's move on to round two now. So round two is called current events. This round is a common question and will test your knowledge on events that have been in the news recently. You'll have 12 seconds to write down your answer after I repeat the quest question once and you may not move your hands out of the view of the camera. A correct answer during this round is worth one point. Contestants, are you ready? Let's begin. On August 4th, 2020, in the midst of a worsening coronavirus pandemic, an explosion rocked a capital city in the Levant region that killed hundreds of people and caused over $15 billion in damage. Officials have uncovered that there was a high quantity of explosive ammonium nitrate in the area, which was the most probable cause of the blast. This blast occurred in which capital city on the shores of St. George Bay? I repeat. On August 4th, 2020, in the midst of a worsening coronavirus pandemic, an explosion rocked a capital city in the Levant region that killed hundreds of people and caused over $15 billion in damages. Officials have uncovered that there was a high quantity of explosive ammonium nitrate in the area which was the most probable cause of this blast. This blast occurred in which capital city on the shores of St. George Bay? You will have 12 seconds. And please show this slide. And that is time. Please sh show your answers. Nirmal, what is your answer? I have Beirut. Anish? Beirut. Caleb? Beirut. Harry? Beirut. Andrew? Beirut. Lakshya? Beirut. Roman? Beirut. Max? Beirut. Vibov? Uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And Ashmit? Beirut. Everybody got it right? The correct answer is Beirut. All right, then. We're ready to move on to the next slide. And we can see that the standings have not moved. We're going to move on to round three now. Round three is called Park Perceptive. Get your writing devices out because this round will consist of three different common questions. This round is a multiple choice question round and is designed to test your ability to be able to use your geographic knowledge to make correct inferences based on the information provided. Each question will be worth one point and at the conclusion of round three, we will see how the standings have changed. So guys, are you ready? Let's get started. First question. Native to Southeast Asia and the extensive Indonesian archipelago, the Malayan tapir is easily identifiable by its markings, most notably the light colored patch that stretches from its shoulders towards its rear end. The Malayan tapir, listed as endangered on the IUCN red list, inhabits what type of habitat within Sumatra's Kerinci Sebwat National Park? Steppe, temperate rainforests, 
or montane rainforest? I will repeat the question. Native to Southeast Asia and the extensive Indonesian archipelago, the Malayan tapir is easily identifiable by its markings, most notably the light colored patch that stretches from its shoulders towards its rear end. The Malayan tapir, listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List, inhabits what type of habitat within Sumatra's Karinchi Sablat National Park? Steppe, temperate rainforests, or montane rainforests? And ignore the first option. It says mangroves, but it should be step instead. And that is time. Nirmal? I have mountain rainforest. Anish? I have temperate rainforest. Caleb? Montane rainforest. Harry? Montane rainforest. Andrew? Montane rainforest. Lakshya? Temperate rainforest. Roman? Montane rainforest. Max? Montane rainforest. Vibov? Temperate rainforest. And Ashmith? Montane rainforest. And the correct answer is montane rainforest. Now on to the next question. The IUCN Red List tracks endangered species around the planet to help and preserve the balance and biodiversity of animals living within the natural world. Which of these animals is not listed as endangered or critically endangered on the IUCN Red List? The Javan rhino, the scarlet macaw, the Bornean orangutan, or the Amur leopard. I repeat, the IUCN Red List tracks endangered species around the planet to help and preserve the balance and biodiversity of animals living within the natural world. Which of these animals is not listed as endangered or critically endangered on the IUCN Red List? The Javan rhino, scarlet macaw, Bornean orangutan, or Amur leopard. And that is time. Nirmal. Born in orangutan. Anish. I wrote um, uh, Scarlet Macaw. Caleb. Scarlet Macaw. Harry. Scarlet Macaw. Andrew. Scarlet Macaw. Bakshia. Scarlet Macaw. Roman. Scarlet Macaw. Max. Scarlet Macaw. Vibov. Scarlet Macaw. And Ashmit. Scarlet Macaw. All right, so the correct answer is Scarlet Macaw. Now on to the last question in this round. The use of the Koppen classification system has allowed us to effectively divide the world into five main global climate groups, tropical, dry, temperate, continental, and polar. The majority of the U.S. states located east of the Mississippi River experience a CFA climate, which falls into which of the five main climate groups? I repeat, the use of the Koppen classification system has allowed us to effectively divide the world into five main global climate groups, tropical, dry, temperate, continental, and polar. The majority of the U.S. states located east of the Mississippi River experience a CFA climate, which falls into which of the five main climate groups? And that is time. Nirmal? Um, I'm temperate. Anish? Temperate. Caleb? Continental. 
Harry. And temperate. Andrew. Temperate. Luxia. Continental. Roman. Temperate. Max. Mental. Uh, Vibov. Continental. And Ushmit. Temperate. The correct answer is temperate. All right, then. All right, let's move on to the next slide. And we can see that the standings have changed quite a bit. Um, Andrew Lakshia, Vibov, and Max hanging in the danger zone here. Roman and Ashmith with a perfect score. Let's now move on to round four. Round four is called International Exploration. This round will test your knowledge on world geography and is designed to challenge your mental map, as well as your knowledge of political geography. Each question will be worth two points. When it is your turn, please put up both of your hands in the view of the camera, or else we will not accept your answer. Let's begin with Nermo. The city of Portsmouth, acting as a gateway to Cabritz National Park, was once the formal ca former capital of a North American island country in the Lesser Antilles. Name this country, located between two French overseas territories in the Caribbean Sea. Dominica. Dominica is correct. Anish. The Azure Window, a natural arch and popular tourist attraction, was destroyed by storms sweeping through the Mediterranean region in, in 2017. This natural landmark was once located just off the coast of San Lorenz, near the northern limit of the Maltese Archipelago, on what island whose Gigantia temples are among the world's oldest freestanding structures? The island of Malta? I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Gozzo. Caleb. An uninhabited headland located in northwestern Saudi Arabia's Tabuk region, Ras Al Sheikh Hamid serves as the gateway to the many popular coral reefs and diving destinations in the Red Sea. Ras Al Sheikh Hamid is situated directly east from the resort town of Sharm Al Sheikh on the southern boundary of what large gulf? The Gulf of Aqaba. The Gulf of Aqaba is correct. Harry. Henderson Island, which has been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1988, is notable for its 10 different species of plants and birds that are endemic to the island. Henderson Island, part of an isolated archipelago in the Pacific Ocean, is an overseas territory of which country? Uh, the UK. The UK is correct. Andrew, Chapo Wadi, known to be the highest point in Nigeria and one of the highest peaks in the West African world, can be found in Gashaka Gumti National Park in the northern portion of Nigeria's Taraba State. Chapo Wadi lies along the Mambila Plateau, straddling the border between Nigeria and which other African country? Can you repeat the question? Uh, sure. Chapel Wadi, known to be the highest point in Nigeria and one of the highest peaks in the West African world, can be found in Gashaka Gumti National Park in the northern portion of Nigeria's Taraba State. Chapel Wadi lies along the Mambila Plateau, straddling the border between Nigeria and which other African country? Chad? I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Cameroon. Now on to Lakshya. Bukit Barasan Selatan National Park is known for its population of endangered Sumatran elephants, tigers, rabbits, and rhinoceros. Bukit Barasan Selatan National Park, named after its location in the Barisan Mountains, lies just northwest of what strait that borders the southern portion of Sumatra's Lampung province? 
The Strait of Malacca. I'm sorry, but the correct answer is the Sunda Strait. Roman. A study conducted in 2016 showed that the city of Gwalior had the highest air pollution in India and the second highest overall air pollution in the world. Gwalior is located in the Gird region, which comprises the northern section of which centralized Indian state? Uh, Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh is correct. Max. The Lamorne cultural landscape highlights the historical significance of slavery and indentured servitude on the continent of Africa. The Lamorne cultural landscape is situated on a peninsula forming the southwestern portion of what island, the most populous in the Mascarene Islands? Oh, that's right. Sao Tome. I'm sorry, but the correct answer is Mauritius. Okay. Vibuff. Designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2007, the Rideau Canal was built in the early 1800s to defend against attacks from nearby countries. The Rideau Canal, flowing through the neighborhoods of Vanier and New Edinburgh, bisects the urban center of which national capital city? that lies within the western stretches of the Laurentian Mountains. Uh, Ottawa. Ottawa is correct. And finally, Ashmit. Containing the famous pass at Jiaoguan, the Heshi Corridor refers to a stretch of oases that lie directly south of the Chilean Mountains. This corridor is located to the west of the giant Ordos Loop, a meander located along the course of what major river? Yellow River. The Yellow River is correct. All right, good job to everyone. All right, let's move on to the standings. We can see that Roman and Ashmith continue their perfect scores at the top. Nish, Andrew, Lakshya, and Max occupy the danger zone. We're going to move on to round five now. Round five is called Ancient Empires. During this round, you'll be given a map of an ancient empire, as well as a corresponding question that relates to it. A correct answer will be worth two points. After answering your first question, regardless of right or wrong, you'll be asked to explain and create an expansion or improvement to your empire that will be specifically stated within your question. Your answer to this question will be worth another total of three points, which means that during this round, you can earn up to a total of five points. You will all have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Remember to make your explanations somewhat realistic and use geographic terminology to, con to contribute to your reasoning. Let's get started. Normal. The ancient Asian kingdom of Goguryeo was a monarchy that lasted for about 700 years from 37 BCE to 668 AD. During the height and extent of its reign, shown here on this map, the kingdom of Goguryeo was centered around, around what present-day Asian capital city? Pyongyang. Pyongyang is correct for two points. Now, the kingdom of Goguryeo was prone to attacks from the powerful Tang dynasty and Mongolic tribes to the north, as well as the neighboring kingdoms of Sile, Silla and Balhae to the south and Japan to the east. To improve the defensive position of the kingdom of Goguryeo, along which front would you build a wall to most effectively defend yourself from incoming attacks? Remember that you can only build this wall along a single front. And you have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. All right, please start your response. 
Okay, so I would build my wall along the southern side of the Goguryeo Empire along the uh, border with South Korea, defending the Sila and Balhae empires. That is because um, it is prone to those two empires, just in case they attack. Um, I wouldn't build the wall along the northern front, which um, where it is vulnerable to uh, the Tang dynasty and the Mongola tribes, because um, there's already a mountain range along the border, like the Peiktu Mountains. Also, um, no, also, I wouldn't build the wall on the eastern front um, where the Japanese can come because there's also the Peiktu Mountains defending, uh, Peiktu, not the Peiktu, the Taibak Mountains defending it from the rest of the Goguryeo Empire. And I wouldn't build the wall on the western front because there's no major threats on that side. Thank you. All righty. You received three points for your response. Great job. All right, we're going to move on to Anish. Under the rule of the Almoravid dynasty, Morocco stretched across the western coast of the coast of Western Africa and extended into the southern fringes of the Iberian Peninsula. Before losing control, the Almoravids ruled out of an, an imperial Moroccan city located in the Atlas Mountains, about halfway between Agadir and Casablanca. Name this large inland city. Um, ben Seuss? The correct answer is Marrakesh. All right, here is your prompt. The Almoravid dynasty wants to expand its trade into the salt industry so that it can continue to boost its economy and build a regional monopoly over this essential mineral. At which location number on this map would a salt mine be most suitable for the Almoravid dynasty and why? You have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. All right, that's time. Please, please start your answer. I would build it at number two because number two is one situated on on the coast of the Albaran Sea, a subset of the Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea is a saltwater body. Number four is also situated on the Atlantic Ocean, which is also a saltwater body, but it is very close to the very very close to the very close to neighboring kingdoms, which which are enemies of of the Almoravid dynasty. So it would not be safe to build a salt mine there. Number one and number three. Number one is located inland, so it is not in the middle of the desert, so there is not much use building a salt mine in the middle of the desert, is there? And number three is outside of the territory of the Almoravid dynasty overall, and how and how are you going to build a salt mine in your own ter outside of your own territory? Overall, number two is the best choice. All right, you know, I'll take a second to grade your answer. You got three points. Good job with your reasoning. Very well done. We're now going to move on to Caleb. Caleb, a historical region once home to the Odrysian kingdom lasting until 46 AD from the 480 BCE. This present day geographical region spans a territory within three different countries along the Balkan Peninsula. Name this region northwest of Istanbul that during its kingdom years stretched as far north as Dobruja in present-day Romania. Grace. Grace is correct for two points. Good job. Now here is your prompt. The Adrisian kingdom would like to set up a port to control trade that comes from the ports in present-day Crimea, Ukraine, and Russia. To do this, the Odrysian kingdom needs to set up a poor city to prevent ships from exiting the Black Sea and forcing them to tax their way through to continue any further. At which location number on this map would you choose to build a port city? Use geographic referencing and place names to describe the area where you would like to build a port city as well as the number. And please explain why. You have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. 
your time starts now. All right, please start your response. By far the best location for the Newport city is at the location of number one, near the current city of Constantinople slash Istanbul, because it block, it's on the Bosphorus Strait, which separates the Black Sea from the Sea of Marmara and the greater Mediterranean Sea, and it's possible to pass uh, into the Mediterranean from the Black Sea without going through the Bosphorus. The other locations have harbors as well, but they do not block the trade routes into the Mediterranean. Whereas uh, Constantinople has natural harbors such as the Golden Horn and can control all traffic uh, through the Bosporus and tax anybody that wants to go through. So they are by, number one is by far the best location to build the new port city. All right. You got three points for your response. Well done. We're going to move on to Harry now. Harry. The first Mexican empire was very short-lived and lasted only two years, ending in 1823 with the then emperor Iturbide's ab abdication. Its maximum extent stretched well into the present day United States, including as far north as what bay where the Carquines Strait connects the Suisun and San Pablo estuaries. San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay is correct. Now, here's your prompt. The rapid expansion of the United States towards the western coast of North America is threatening the Mexican Empire's control of power in the region. Which present day US state bordering this former Mexican empire should the Mexican empire seize in order to block off Atlantic US trade with international European countries. Choose the state you would like to capture and please explain why, using references to geographic locations and present or historical place names within your response. You'll have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. All right, please start your response. Uh, for I would capture the state of Louisiana because it is um, it is along the Missis at the mouth of the Mississippi River, which is a major river connecting like the interior of the United States and a lot of the farming regions in the Midwest. New Orleans at the end of the Mississippi River is also a major port that would be a hub for European trade. And also, since they captured the mouth of the Mississippi River. The U.S. would be unable to ship uh, farming and um, like crops down the Mississippi River to export from New Orleans, which means it would be much harder to export stuff to places like Europe, which could uh, stop a lot of the trade. Thank you. You received three points for your response. Well done. We'll move on to Andrew now. Andrew, populated by Seninke clans of Mande speaking people, the Trans Saharan city of Kumbi Saleh served as the capital of a thriving desert empire whose salt and gold trade brought prosperity and wealth to its people. This empire shared its name with a present day country on the Gulf of Guinea and was known by what name? Ghana. Uh, Ghana is correct for two points. Now, just a second, here is your prompt. The Ghana empire must expand its agriculture and farming sector to produce enough food to support its people. To do this, the Ghana empire must find a source of fresh water, such as a lake or river. 
and set up a slew of farming communities along or around it to effectively produce enough food for years to come. Name a body of water or an area you would like the Ghana Empire to reserve for agriculture and farming and explain your reasoning. You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. Wait, do I start speaking now? Yes, you may start okay. when you would like, yes. Okay, um, I would choose the Niger River because it is a source of fresh water, um, one of the only long rivers in Western Africa, and um, it already flows through some of the cities shown, such as Timbuktu, and it is home to a fertile plain along its banks, and it um, allows transportation of the crops that they need to grow, and um, it is a hub of the salt, uh, trade during, or at least during that time, and also the trade of crops such as millet and sorghum, which are um, two crops that were heavily consumed during the period of the Ghana Empire. And it um, gives access to international trade with other, em other West African empires. Thank you. Thank you. You got three points for your response. Good job. We're going to move on to Lakshya. One of a group of cultures that would conquer lands and set up a tributary of systems connecting most of Polynesia, the Tui Empire was a monarchy that controlled the southern nations of the Pacific Ocean for hundreds of years. The center of the Tui Empire was once the ancient city of Mua, now a village located on the eastern part of what island? Can you repeat the question? All right, here's your repeat. One of a group of cultures that would conquer lands and set up a tributary of systems connecting most of Polynesia, the Tui Empire was a monarchy that controlled the southern nations of the Pacific Ocean for hundreds of years. The center of the Tui Empire was once the ancient city of Mua, now a village located on the eastern part of what island? Tahiti. The correct answer is Tonga Tapu. Now, here's your question. Here's your prompt. One of the coral reefs off the coast of Tonga Tapu is dying from coral bleaching that comes from runoff fertilizer that is used by the Tui Empire. However, this fertilizer is required to grow crops and the Tui Empire cannot afford to stop using it. What is your solution to stopping this runoff that is ruining the coral, coral reefs and how will you execute it? You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. All right, please start your response. My solution is to um, make people start farming and using fertilizers near the coast because that's where most coral reefs are and try to move more inland and do their farming. I would execute it by uh, having the government uh, set up a, every, a meeting about every like one or two months and see it like how much runoff fertilizer there is near the coral reefs and how the coral reefs are getting affected. And then the next one or two days, they would um, make up a meeting and then see what other solutions they could do to reduce the amount of runoff fertilizer near the coral reefs. All right. You received two points for your response. Although moving inland would help to minimize the runoff, 
it would not entirely stop it because the fertilizer would still be able to reach the ocean, especially with Tonga Tapu being so small. Let's now move on to Roman. Roman. A blue dragon is depicted on a yellow triangular flag of the last Chinese dynasty to exist since ancient times. This dynasty originated from what historical and geographical region encompassing the provinces of Heilongjiang, Jiling, and Liaoning? Uh, Manchuria. Manchuria is correct for two points. Now, here is your prompt. The Qing Dynasty has recently experienced an ecological disaster from the flooding of the Yellow River, which has killed thousands and di displaced millions of people. How can you prevent future incidents of mass flooding from the Yellow River and make sure that your citizens are safe? Give a reasonable solution and explain how it would work. You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. All right, please start your response. Okay, so I I would make a system where we could where you could divert some of some of the river's water to to farms where they need that water to produce crops. Um and then that that would also that would also get get more crops to feed the population. Um and uh um I, I would execute it by have by uh, digging some canals uh, to get to the farms. Uh, and what? Uh, please continue, please continue. And that, that would, uh, that would, that, that would, A, divert some of the flood water away so that the floods wouldn't be that bad. And then B, provide more, more crops for the farm. Thank you. All right. You got three points for your response. Very innovative idea. We're now going to move on to Max. Max. The conquest of the Neo-Inca state of Vilcabamba by the Spanish in 1572 saw the death of Tupac Amaru, the last emperor of his country, and the eradication of Incan rule in South America. Vilcabamba, a modern Inca ruin, spoke what language that is still common among many indigenous groups living within the Andes Mountains today? Quechua. Quechua is correct for two points. Now, here is your prompt. Silver mines from the Incan Empire are polluting Lake Titicaca, which is the source of fresh water for multiple cities, including Chuquito, Chuquiapu, and Hatancola you are tasked with finding an alternate location for a silver mine, which can produce mass loads of silver while not affecting the health and well-being of your fellow Incan citizens. At which location number on this map would a silver mine be most suitable? Answer with the number that you think is the best for a new silver mine and explain your reasoning. You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to respond. Your time starts now. Please begin your response. I would choose location three as the location of my uh, of the new silver mine. Uh, be, uh, location three is located in Bolivia, which historically had the Potosi silver mine, which uh, provided a lot of silver for the Spanish Empire. Bolivia has many endoheric basins, uh, for so any runoff would not uh, like from the mine carrying like heavy metal pollutants would not run into Lake Titicaca, but instead to uh, like uh, salt pans, uh, which are not really used extensively for uh, fresh water. 
the other options, uh, including like one, two, and four, are near major uh, in major population centers within the empire, uh, including Kajamarka, uh, Jauja, and also the retreat of Machu Picchu. While three is located near the, uh, I guess like uh, further away from the major population centers. Uh, option two would also be located near the ocean and any runoff from there could decimate local fisheries. So uh, for those reasons, I would choose three to be the site of the new silver mine. All right. You received, you received three points for your response. Very well done. We're now going to move on to Vaibhav. Vaibhav. The kingdom of Butua was a pre-colonial African state that was renowned as a source of gold for both Portuguese and Arabic traders. Its capital was centered around the ancient ruins of Kami, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Part of what large city situated directly southeast of Wangay National Park? Harare. The correct answer is Bulawayo. Now, here is your prompt. Droughts are becoming frequently more common in the kingdom of Butua and a new water conservation plan is needed to prevent citizens from dying of thirst, as well as keeping the kingdom of Butua at the height of its power. What plan could you come up with to conserve and store water for the kingdom of Butua? Explain your solution and how it would work. You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. Wait, so do you just want a solution for um? For the Kingdom of Butua or um, just the city of Kami? Kingdom of Butua. Okay. All right, that's time. Please start your answer. Uh, so <clears throat> the way I would uh, help get water to the kingdom of Butua and to save its citizens from dying of thirst would be to divert water from certain rivers and lakes around the area. For example, just to the south of the kingdom of Butua near the border, sorry, not, not near the border, but um, near the Zambezi River, you could divert that water. It's really close to the kingdom. And it's also really close to the city of Kami and diverting that water by building maybe like a canal or a pipeline, that would really help because the Zambezi um, River's discharge is one of the largest in Africa. Another thing you could do is di divert water from maybe even some lakes such as like Bangweulu, which is located up north. And that lake, it, despite not being very huge, would be more than enough to supply water for a long time for the, for the citizens of the kingdom of Butwa. And um, the inland delta is very um, fertile. That inland delta I'm talking about would be the Okavango delta, and that isn't very far away from the kingdom of Butwa either. So with these three, um, uh, with these three places in mind, uh, I would, that's how I would get water to the kingdom of Butwa. Thank you. All right. You received three points for your response. What? Now, we're going to move on to Ashmith for the final question. Ashmith, Rwanda, Yurundi, a territory once formed by the present day African countries of Rwanda and Burundi within the African Great, Great Lakes region was once a part of colonial German East Africa and was ruled by another European country for almost 40 years between 1922 and 1962. This territory was administered from Bujumbura by which European country whose urban centers include the towns of Bastone, Rochefort, and Saint Hubert? Belgium. Belgium is correct for two points. 
Now, here's your prompt. The territory of Rwanda Yurundi has recently become independent, but there is tension between the native Hutu and Tutsi people groups. Knowing what we know now about the Rwandan massacre, how can you prevent a situation like this from happening without using force or violence? Give a solution to this problem and explain how it would work to ease relationships between people groups living in the territory of Rwanda Yurundi. You will have 15 seconds to think and one minute to explain your answer. Your time starts now. Please start your response. A way to prevent conflict between the Hutu and Tutsi people in this province would be to set up um, certain councils of Hutus and certain councils of Tutsis and for them to meet together every couple of months to discuss um, negotiations and compromises that they could make. Another way to prevent such conflict would be to help promote understandings of both cultures among both Hutus and Tutsis. All right. Take a second grade. You received three points for your response. Well done. All right. All right, we're ready to move to the standings now. And we can see Roman and Ashmith continue their lead at the top. Andrew moves out of the danger zone. We're now going to move on to the next round. So round six is called Art and Architecture. This round will consist of five common questions, so get your writing devices out. Art and architecture has always been a way for humans and cultures to express their differential identities. During this round, a picture will be shown on the slides that will assist your ability to be able to answer the question. You will have 12 seconds to write down your answer once I finish repeating the question. You may not ask for any more repeats and spellings, repeats and or spellings during this round. Let's begin with the first question. Despite the 1917 earthquake, this UNESCO World Heritage Site contains one of the best preserved historical centers in Latin America. One of the main architectural feats in this center of this city is the Church of El Sagrario, which displays part of this city's unique colonial past. Name this capital city located in the valley of the Guayabamba River. I repeat, despite the 1917 earthquake, this UNESCO World Heritage Site contains one of the best preserved historic features, historic centers in Latin America. One of the main architectural feats in the center of this city is the Church of El Sagrario, which, di which displays part of this city's unique colonial past. Name this capital city located in the valley of the Guayabamba River. And that is time, Nervo. I have the Anish. Guatemala City. Caleb. Bogota. Harry. Guatemala City. Andrew. Quito. Lakshya. Quito. Roman. Quito. Max. Vito. Bye, Buff. Vito, Ecuador. And Ashmith. Quito. All right, so the correct answer is Quito. Next question. Islam has been a major influence on the architecture of many cities, which is especially evident in Western Asia and Northern Africa. 
This picture shows the two main water towers located within the skyline of what major Middle Eastern capital city, whose, is, whose historic area of Jibla is, known, is home to one of the city's oldest neighborhoods. I repeat, Islam has been a major influence on the architecture of many cities, which is especially evident in Western Asia and Northern Africa. This picture shows the two main water towers located within the skyline of what major Middle Eastern capital city, whose historic area of Jibla is home to one of the city's oldest neighborhoods. And that is time. Nirmal? Rosmanama. Anish? Wait, city. Caleb? Wait, city. Harry? No answer. Uh, Andrew? Ron? Lakshia? Riyadh? Roman? Manama? Max? Kuwait City. Vibe Uh, Kuwait City, Kuwait. And Ashmith. Kuwait City. All right, so the correct answer is Kuwait City. Third question. The Battle of the Plains of Abraham was a pivotal battle in the Seven Years' War that took place near a major Canadian city, shown here in this map, that was created back in 1894. Characterized by its cultural mix of colonial architecture, what is the name of this bilingual city? I repeat, the Battle of the Plains of Abraham was the pivotal battle in the Seven Years' War that took place near a major Canadian city, shown here in this map, that was created back in 1894. Characterized by its cultural mix of colonial architecture, what is the name of this bilingual city? And that is time. Nirmal? Quebec City. Anish? Quebec City. Caleb? Quebec. Harry? Quebec City. Andrew? Quebec City. Lakshia? Montreal. Roman? Montreal. Max? Quebec City. Five of Longton, New Brunswick. Ashmit. Montreal. The correct answer is Quebec City. Now on to the fourth question. A prominent city of the Carthaginian Empire, Leptis Magna, was once a 7th century Phoenician foundation. Today, it is currently located at the mouth of the Wadi Lebda on the Mediterranean Sea, about halfway between Tripoli and what other major city on the western boundary of the Gulf of Sidra? I repeat, a prominent city of the Carthaginian Empire, Leptis Magna, was once a 7th century Phoenician foundation. Today, it is currently located at the mouth of the Wadi Lebda on the Mediterranean Sea, about halfway between Tripoli and what other major city on the western boundary of the Gulf of Sidra? And that is time. Nirmal? Uh, Nirmal, please show your answer. I have no, no answer. Anish? Benghazi? Caleb? Third. Um, Harry? Benghazi. Andrew? Ron? Bakshia? Benghazi. Roman? Fox. Max? Benghazi. Vibov? Uh, Benghazi, Libya. Uh, Ashmit? 
Benghazi. All right. This was a pretty challenging question. I think nobody got it right. It is Misrata. And the final question. A former barracks and prison that has now been turned into a national museum housing some of the world's finest historical sculptures, the, Bar the Bargello Museum, is part of a major Italian city's famous urban center. This renowned European museum is located directly north of the Ponte Alle Grazie Bridge, crossing what major river that rises on the slopes of Mount Falterona and empties into the Ligurian Sea? I repeat, a former barracks and prison that has now been turned into a national museum housing some of the world's finest historical sculptures, the Bargello Museum, is part of a major Italian city's famous urban center. This renowned European museum is located directly north of the Ponte Alle Grazie Bridge, crossing what major river that rises on the slopes of Mount Falterona and empties into the Ligurian Sea? And that is time, Nirmal. The Arno River. Anish. The Arno River. And by the way, I would like to apologize for my not turning on, to turning my camera to my paper quickly enough. Oh, uh, that is that is completely fine. Caleb. Arno. Harry. Arno. Andrew. Arno River. Luxia. Pole River. Roman. Oh, River. Max. No. Vibov. Sog, no river. And Ashmet. Po River. The correct answer is the Arno River. And that is the end of round six. Vibov, could you please repeat your answer? It was Bizogno River, Bisogno, B I S A G N O. Okay. Um, all right, let's take a look at the standings. As we can see, Max has hauled himself out of the danger zone. Nirmal takes the lead at the top. And along with Caleb, we'll move on to the next round. For round seven, we have a special guest. Let's turn to the slides. Hi everyone, my name is Carl Menon and I'm the winner of the 2015 National Geographic Bee. Firstly, I'd like to extend my congratulations to all of you for making it this far in the 2020 GOLE Geography Bee. You guys have worked hard, I'm super proud of you and give yourselves a pat on your back for making it this far. After the B, geography has still remained a crucial part of my life and I love going to competitions and seeing the next generation of geo enthusiasts. And your knowledge will take you a really long way in life. So here's the question. Pakistan International Airlines flight 8303 was a scheduled flight that was supposed to land at Jinnah International Airport in the city of Karachi on May 22nd. Instead, this plane crashed into Karachi's model colony, one of the most densely populated parts of the city. This plane was a scheduled domestic flight within Pakistan that took off from the Allama Iqbal International Airport, serving what major city on the Ravi River, home to the Shalimar Gardens, a UNESCO World Heritage Site? All right, you'll have 12 seconds to write down your answer. That's time, please share your answers. Normal. Lahore. Okay. Anish. Caleb. Lahore. Harry. 
Lahore. Andrew. Lahore. Lakshia. Lahore. Roman. Lahore. Max. Lahore. Vibov. Lahore. And Ashmith. Lahore. Unsurprisingly, the correct answer is Lahore. So good job. Everybody got that one correct. Alrighty. Alrighty, let's like take a look at the standings. Let's take a look. All right. Um, just a second. Uh, go out and go back in. Sorry about that. And there we go. So none of the standings have changed. Everybody got the question correct. Let's move on to round eight now. Round eight is called Atlas Adventure. This round is an individual round and will test your ability to be able to apply your mental map into answering questions on the knowledge of our world's geography. You will have 12 seconds to answer your question and the same rules apply. The correct answer is worth two points during this round. Let's get started again with Nermal. Nermal. In order to efficiently transport grain from China's eastern coast towards Beijing, Emperor Yang of the Sui Dynasty oversaw the construction of the Grand Canal, which still exists as a UNESCO World Heritage Site today. This canal currently ends in what Chinese provincial capital, just south of Shanghai, that is the site of the world's largest annual tidal bore along the banks of the Qiantian River. Hangzhou. Hangzhou is correct. We now move on to Anish. Anish. The toy company Lego has been previously placed under fire for its misuse of Maori terms in one of its original IPs. The Maori people mostly it live in New Zealand but trace their origins to which sub-region of Oceania whose southern boundary is formed by the Society Islands? Polynesia? Polynesia is correct. Caleb. Known for its view that overlooks the calm Baltic waters, Vilsandi National Park is a common tourist destination for local visitors and nature lovers. Vilsandi National Park is located west from the town of Kihelkona on what island that lies directly north of Latvia's Courland Peninsula? Sarema. Sarema is correct. Harry. Leading to a series of white salt flats near the Basaral and Ortaral archipelagos, the town of Koigan is an often overlooked tourist destination in northeastern Central Asia. Situated near the mouth of the Ili River, Koigan lies along the southern portion of what lake that forms the northwestern boundary of Kazakhstan's Almaty region? Lake Balkash. Rick Balkash is correct. On to Andrew. Andrew, the home of a first century Roman amphitheater from the reign of the Emperor Gallienus. The city of Verona was the site for the romantic setting of Shakespeare's famous play, Romeo and Juliet. Located just northwest of Venice, Verona lies along the banks of what river the second longest river in the country of Italy. The Po River? I'm sorry, the correct answer is the Adige River. We now move on to Lakshia. During the Golden Age of Athens, the Long Walls were a series of fortifications that were built to protect the city of Athens from inland and coastal invasions. These fortifications protected Athens and what neighboring port city on the Saronic Gulf that was blockaded by per Persian forces during the Battle of Salamis in the year of 480 BCE? That's uh, Loniki. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Piraeus. 
We now move on to Roman. Roman. An inlet of the Timor Sea, named for the brother of a once great French emperor, the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf is located where the Keep River drains into the sea. The Joseph Bonaparte Gulf is shared between the Northern Territory and which other Australian state? Um, West Australia, Western Australia. Western Australia is correct. Max. The first city founded by freed ex-slaves from Great Britain, this capital city situated on the estuary of the Roquel River is the site of Bunce Island, a notorious landmark that once played an important role in the transatlantic slave trade. Name this African capital city that lies at the foothills of the Lion Mountains. Uh, Freetown? Freetown is correct. Now, on to Vibrif. Occupying the central district of Sipaliwini within South America's Precambrian Guyana Shield, the Wilhelmina Mountains extend across part of the Tumukumake uplands and offer stunning views of the valleys in tropical rainforests down below. The Wilhelmina Mountains reach their highest apex at what peak, the tallest mountain in the only Dutch-speaking country outside of Europe? Uh, Mount Roraima. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Juliana Top. And finally, Ashmith. Ashmith, sitting on a headland dominating the scene of Lone Bay, Rovinj was once an important town in the Republic of Venice and is still a popular tourist destination today. Rovinj, situated across the Adriatic Sea from the present day city of Venice, is located on what large peninsula? The Istrian Peninsula. The Istrian Peninsula is correct. All right. Let's take a look at the standings now. So we can see Roman again pulls himself out of the drop zone. Andrew, Anish, Vibov, and Lakshia occupy the danger zone. We're going to move on to round nine now. Round nine is called traveling back in time. History has been a record of the success of humans over thousands of years. This round will test your knowledge on historical events and figures that correlate to world geography. You will answer a series of five different common questions during this round. Each question is worth two points. And at the conclusion of round nine, we will take a look at the scores and see where things stand. Contestants, get ready again for the first question. First question. The Missouri Compromise, enacted in 1820, sought to establish and maintain the balance of free states and slave-owning states. It introduced the 12th slave state and the 12th free state simultaneously into the country. Signed by James Monroe, this compromise added what free Atlantic bounding state to the Union, whose present day border is partially formed by the St. John and St. Croix River systems. I repeat, the Missouri Compromise, enacted in 1820, sought to establish and maintain the balance of free states and slave owning states. It introduced the 12th slave state and the 12th free state simultaneously into the country. Signed by James Monroe, this compromise added what free Atlantic bounding state to the Union, whose present day border is partially formed by the St. John and St. Croix River systems. And that is time, Nirmal. Anish? Maine. Caleb? Maine. Harry? Maine. Andrew? Maine. Bakshia? Maine. Roman? Maine. Max? Maine. Vibov? 
No answer. Ashmit? Main. All right, the correct answer is main. Uh, Normal, could you please repeat your answer? Answer. Uh, repeat it again. Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Okay, got it. Now on to the second question. A hard-fought victory in the Pacific theater of World War II. The United States successfully captured the island of Iwo Jima during the early months of 1945. This island is administered by the Ogasawara subprefecture, a part of what metropolitan city whose urban center is partially formed by the commercial business district of Nihonbashi? I repeat, a hard fought victory in the Pacific theater of World War II. The United States successfully captured the island of Iwo Jima during the early months of 1945. This island is administered by the Ogasawara subprefecture, a part of what metropolitan city? whose urban center is partially formed by the commercial business district of Nihonbashi. And that is time. Nirmal? Tokyo. Anish? Tokyo. Caleb? Tokyo. Harry? Tokyo. Andrew? Naha. Buxia? Tokyo. Roman? Tokyo. Max? Tokyo. Baibov? Osaka. Ashmit? Tokyo. The correct answer is Tokyo. Uh, just a second, please. Um, taking a little while to adjust the scores. Let me pause it. All right, go ahead. Now on to question three. The largest chariot battle ever fought in history, the Battle of Kadesh was fought between the New Kingdom of Egypt and the Hittites. This battle took place in a namesake city along the banks of the Orontes River, which rises in what fertile valley that lies west of the, that lies west of the anti-Lebanon range? I repeat, the largest chariot battle ever fought in history, the Battle of Kadesh, was fought between the New Kingdom of Egypt and the Hittites. This battle took place in a namesake city along the banks of the Orontes River, which rises in what fertile valley that lies west of the anti-Lebanon range? And that is time. Nirmal? Becca Valley. Anish? Becca Valley, I'm sorry again for not bringing my camera down in time. It's fine. Caleb? Kush. Harry? Lebanon Valley. Andrew? Euphrates Valley. Bakshia? Becca Valley. Roman? Jordan Valley. Max. Lebond. Vibov. Ashmit. Becca Valley. The correct answer is the Becca Valley. Fourth question. A mystical man alleged to have healing powers. Grigory Rasputin was a peasant who exerted a considerable amount of influence on the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II. Eventually, he was murdered by nobles who lured him into the Yusupov Palace, a historical site now located southwest of the State Hermitage Museum in the central district of what major Russian city? I repeat, a mystical man alleged to have healing powers, Grigory Rasputin, was a peasant who exerted a considerable amount of influence on the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II. Eventually, he was murdered by nobles who lured him into the Yusupov Palace, a historical site now located southwest of the State Hermitage Museum in the central district of what major Russian city?
And that is time. Nirmal? I'll say Petersburg. Anish? I said St. Petersburg too. Oh, Caleb? St. Petersburg. Harry? Petersburg. Andrew? St. Petersburg. Luxia? St. Petersburg. Roman? St. Petersburg. Max? St. Petersburg. Vibov? St. Petersburg. Ashmet? St. Petersburg. The correct answer is St. Petersburg. Final question. The deadliest conflict in the history of Latin America, the War of the Triple Alliance, was an engagement fought between Paraguay and the allied countries of Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. This war came to an end on March 1st, 1870, at the Battle of Cerro Cora, fought near the present-day city of Ponta Pora, in what Brazilian state that forms the entire northeastern boundary of Paraguay? I repeat. The deadliest conflict in the history of Latin America, the War of the Triple Alliance, was an engagement fought between Paraguay and the allied countries of Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. This war came to an end on March 1st, 1870, at the Battle of Cerro Cora, fought near the present-day city of Ponta Pora, in what Brazilian state that forms the entire northeastern boundary of Paraguay? And that is time. Nirmal. Mardi Gras do so. Anish. Sorry, I couldn't find it. Mato Grasso do so. Caleb. Mato Grasso. Harry. Mato Grosso do so. Andrew. Mato Grosso do so. Lakshya. Mato Grosso do so. Roman. Mato Grosso do Sul. Max. Mato Grosso. Vibov. Mato Grosso. And Ashmet. Mato Grosso. The correct answer is Mato Grosso do Sul. All right, that concludes. All right, we're ready to take a look at the standings. And we see that Standings have changed. We're going to move on to round 10. This is the final round before we will eliminate four of our contestants. Round 10 is called bonus splits. In this round, each contender will be asked three rapid fire questions with five seconds to answer each question. But if you succeed in getting all three questions correct, you will receive a harder bonus question that is worth up to another two points. If you don't, get a perfect score. However, you will not receive this bonus question. Each contender can earn up to two points per, per answer for a total of eight points. After this round, we will narrow down the field to the top six highest scores and eliminate the four contestants who remain in the red danger zone. Let's get started with Nermal. Move to the next slide, please. All right. Normal. The world's tastiest chicken cl claims to come from the Miyazaki Prefecture on the southernmost major island of which country? Japan. Japan is correct. What is the capital of the Mexican state of Hidalgo? Pachuca. Pachuca is correct. Cernagora, translating to Black Mountain, is the alternative name for which European country? Maybe. Cernagora, translating to Black Mountain, is the alternative name for which European country? Um, Montenegro. Montenegro is correct. Here's your bonus question. The Tekakoi Caves, located near the southern boundary of the Black Sea, are part of what mountain range? The Tauros Mountains. I'm sorry, the correct answer was the Pontic Mountains. We now move on to Anish. Anish. Amara is an official language of which South American country? Please repeat. 
Amara is an official language of which South American country? Peru? I'm sorry, the correct answer is Bolivia. The city of Badambang serves as the gateway to the Phnom Sang Coast Wildlife Sanctuary in the western portion of which Southeast Asian country? Cambodia. Yes, that is correct. Ponta Delgada is the capital of which Portuguese-speaking volcanic island group? The Madeira Islands. I'm sorry, the correct answer is the Azores. On to Caleb. Caleb. Hierro and La Gomera are islands belonging to which European country? Spain. Spain is correct. The French cities of Nantes and Tours are located along the course of which major river? The Loire River. The Loire River is correct. Located directly northeast of the city of Castelli, the Bacconi region is part of the western mountainous portion of what country? Can you spell Kestoween? Okay. K-E-S-Z-T-H-E-L-Y. Kestoween. Wait, so can you repeat the question? All right. Located directly northeast of the city of Castelli, the, ba the Bacconi region is part of the western mountainous portion of what country? Hungary. Hungary is correct. What? Here's your bonus question. What Central American capital city is located midway between the Santa Ana and San Vicente volcanoes? San Salvador. San Salvador is correct for two points. All right, we now move on to Harry. Harry, the Nariva Swamp is located around 200 kilometers north from the Orinoco River Delta in which maritime island country? Trinidad and Tobago. That's correct. What is the currency of Nicaragua? Uh, Cordoba. That is correct. Al Ain is an inland oasis city located along the border between the UAE and which other country? Saudi Arabia. The correct answer was Oman. So no bonus question for you. Now move on to Andrew. Andrew. Which French city, one of the three seats of the European Union, is the capital of the Grand Est region? Lyon. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Strasbourg. The largest island in Central America is protected by Coiba Island National Park in what country? Panama. That is correct. Covered by dense vegetation and mangroves southeast from the Cape Verde archipelago, the Casamance region is a current center of conflict in which West African country? Can you repeat that? All right. Covered by dense vegetation and mangroves southeast from the Cape Verde archipelago, the Casamance region is a current center of conflict in which West African country? Senegal. Senegal is correct. We now move on to Lakshia. Lakshia. The Korland Lagoon is shared between Russia's Kaliningrad Oblast and which other country? Uh, Lithuania. Lithuania is correct. The Garonne River empties into the Gironde estuary before entering what bay? The Bay of Biscay. That is correct. The northernmost point in mainland Europe is located along the southwestern shore of the Barents Sea in which country? Norway. Norway is correct. Here's your bonus question. What city north of the Jos Plateau is the largest Hausa-speaking city in Nigeria? Uh, can you repeat that question? All right. What city north of the Jos Plateau is the largest Hausa-speaking city in Nigeria? Yobe. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Kano. We now move on to Roman. Cape Roca forms the westernmost boundary of the Sintra Mountains along the South Central Coastline region of which European country? Portugal. 
Portugal's correct. Name the highest peak of Sweden. Um, Mount Halti. The correct answer is Kebnekaz. Here's your third question. Located in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, Anticosti Island belongs to which Canadian province? Quebec. Quebec is correct. On to Max. The, Sos the Sosusle sand dunes lie along the interior of the Nakluft Desert in which coastal African country? Namibia. Namibia is correct. Name the capital of China's Shandong province. Uh, can you repeat the question? Okay. Name the capital of China's Shandong province. Uh, Xi'an, no. It's Jinan. Jinan, okay. What river forms most of the border between Greece and Turkey? Greece and Turkey. Uh, the Maritza River. The Maritza River is correct. On to Vibrov. Vibrov. Fort Zealandia is located in the capital city of what country? The least densely populated country on the mainland of South. Denmark? I'm sorry, the correct answer is Suriname. Kibera, one of the largest slums in the world, is located northeast of the Serengeti High Plain in which East African capital city? Kenya. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Nairobi. The Turgay Ravine is a physical feature that stretches across the regions of Kostane and Aktobe in which Asian country? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is correct. And we finally move on to Ashmith. Ashmith. Which capital city lies on a tributary of the Dniester River? Um, Kisinau. Kisinau is correct. Fungna Kibang National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located south from the Red River Delta in which Asian country? Vietnam. Vietnam is correct. What mountain range stretches from Azerbaijan to northeastern Iran's Golestan province? Uh, the Albers Mountains. The Albers Mountains is correct. Here's your bonus question. Bislama is a pidgin tongue that is one of the three official languages of which island country in Oceania? Vanuatu. Vanuatu is correct. And that concludes round 10. All right, all right, the time has come. We're gonna take a look at the standings here. As we see, four people currently occupy the danger zone. That means we have to say goodbye to Roman, Andrew, Lakshia, and Vibov. Great job, guys. You've done so, you've done so well to get this far. The top, six the top six contestants in the safe zone will move on to round 11. All right. We will now take a break before the contestants begin round 11. During this break, you may get out of your seat and go take a drink of water. We will be back when all of you are ready and we will resume the competition then. We will be coming back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the final competition for the second ever GeoLeak Geography Tournament. We have narrowed the field down to six contestants, as shown here, who are ready to battle it out for the top four spots in the next five rounds. The scores will carry over from the previous 10 rounds, and after round 15, the top four scores will move on to the special Geo Elite round. Let's take a look at the current top six leaderboard, as shown here. And let's get started with round 11. Round 11 is called Protecting Our Seas. This round is about protecting our oceans and seas and preserving the abundant wildlife within. It is a common question, so get your writing utensils out and put your hands in the correct position, with one hand covering your paper and the other with your writing utensil, both within the view of the camera. A correct answer during this round will be worth two points. Let's get started. 
The question is, the Natuna Sea, an extensive shallow sea that is geologically part of the underwater Sunda Shelf, has recently been designated as the northernmost stretch of Indonesia's exclusive economic zone. Located northeast of the Riau Archipelago, this sea is a part of what larger sea? You have 12 seconds to write down your answer. I'll repeat it again. The Natuna Sea, an extensive shallow sea that is geologically part of the underwater Sunda Shelf, has recently been designated as the northernmost stretch of Indonesia's exclusive economic zone. Located northeast of the Riau Archipelago, this sea is a part of what larger sea? I have a question. I can't see my camera. Can you see my hands fully? Uh, maybe lower it like just a little bit. Okay, that good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And that is time. Nirmal? I'm just trying to see. Anish? I was trying to see. Caleb? South China Sea. Harry? Java Sea. Um, Max. Max. Uh, could you repeat, Hush. sir? Max, please. South China Sea. Okay. And Ashmet. Java Sea. The correct answer is the South China Sea. All right. All right, let's take a look at the standings now. And we see that the standings currently remain the same. Let's move on to round 12 now. Round 12 is called Culture and Cuisine. This round will test your knowledge of international cuisine and its differentiating identity all across the world. Each of you will receive an individual question where you'll be asked to name a geographic location in connection with your dish. Let's get started. Anish? Wait, uh... Normal, normal. Uh, Anish has a question. Okay. No, no, I was just raising my arms. Okay, all right. Let's go with normal. An Arabic version of the Indian dish, kichdi. Koshari combines Italian, Indian, and Middle Eastern cuisine into a single dish that is served with tomato sauce on top. Koshari is quite popular within the cities of El Gamalea and El Aziza, situated directly southwest, southwest of Lake Manzala in what large river delta? Can you repeat the question? All right. An Arabic version of the Indian dish, kichdi. Koshari combines Italian, Indian, and Middle Eastern cuisine into a single dish that is served with tomato sauce on top. Koshari is quite popular within the cities of Al Gamalea and Al Aziza, situated directly southwest of Lake Manzala in what large river delta? Can you spell the lake? Lake Manzala, M A N. Z L A L A. Um, the Nile. Could you repeat your answer, please? The Nile River. The Nile River Delta is correct. On to Anish. A cold soup made of raw blended vegetables, gazpacho, is intended to be consumed on a hot summer day as a refreshing drink. This beverage originated from southern Spain, specifically Andalusia, where its popularity spread into the nearby Algarve region in Portugal. Andalusia is home to the peak of Mulhacen, the highest point on the Iberian Peninsula, which is located in what coastal subrange of the Baytic mountain system? Is it the Sierra Madre? The correct answer is the Sierra Nevada. Or we're going to move on to Caleb. Caleb. Popular throughout the nations of Western Africa, 
Jolof Rice is known for being the subject of a fierce rivalry between two different nations over whose version of the dish tastes better. Both of these two African countries border what northern extension of the Gulf of Guinea? The Bite of Bonnie. I'm sorry, the correct answer is the Bite of Benin. All right, on to Harry. Made with phyllo pastry and cheese, kanafe is, is a dessert native to the Middle Eastern world and is especially popular amongst countries located within the Levant region. This dessert has spread north to Turkey and south to what Asian capital city that is the source of the Zarka River? Can you repeat the question? All right, here it is. Made with phyllo pastry and cheese, kanafe is a dessert native to the Middle Eastern world and is especially popular amongst countries located within the Levant region. This dessert has spread north to Turkey and south to what Asian capital city that is the source of the Zarka River? Amman. Amman is correct. Max. A popular pastry originating in Central Europe, the oldest known recipe of apple strudel dates all the way back to 1697. This dessert originates from the most livable capital city on the continent of Europe, located along the banks of what major river? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? All right. A popular pastry originating in Central Europe, the oldest known recipe of apple strudel dates all the way back to 1697. This dessert originates from the most livable capital city on the continent of Europe, located along the banks of what major river? Uh, Danube River. The correct answer is the Danube River. Good job. And move on to Ashmith for the final question. Quindim is a popular Brazilian baked dessert made from eggs, sugar, butter, and ground coconut. This dessert was modified in the 17th century by slaves living in what northeastern Brazilian state whose largest city was the first capital of Portuguese colonial Brazil for over two centuries? Bahia. The correct answer is Bahia. And that concludes round 12. Warren. Yes? The bite of Benin is not very well defined, plus it's also quite commonly known as the Bay of Benin instead of the Bite of Benin. And meanwhile, the Bite of Bonnie is also a major and more well-defined gulf, also in the Northern Gulf. Um, so the jollof rice is disputed between the countries of Ghana and Nigeria, which was not stated within the question. They both do, Ghana does not border the Bite of Bonnie which is why it is the Bite of Benin. That, that seems like the only way to know the answer to the question is without the geographic hints provided then, actually knowing the dish. Um, the question asked for your knowledge of cuisines across the world, so unfortunately we cannot count your answer. Thank you for your challenge. All right, let's take a look at the standings now. We can see that Max and Anish still occupy the drop zone. Nermal leads the leaderboard. Let's move on to round 13. Round 13 is called COVID-19. The world has been severely impacted in recent months from a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic that has devastated countries globally, infected millions, and killed hundreds of thousands of people just at home right here in the United States. Knowing where the coronavirus is most severely impacting us can help us to successfully overtake it and eventually eradicate it from present day society. Round 13 is a pyramid common question round that will test your knowledge of, of the coronavirus as well as its connection to the present day global situation and world geography. A correct answer during each stage of round 13 will be worth different point values in decreasing order. If you get the correct answer after the first hint, you'll earn five points. 
after the second hint, four points, after the third hint, three points, and so on and so forth. But be careful, an incorrect answer will earn you zero points and you will not be allowed to answer a second time. You will have 12 seconds to answer for each clue and the same rules apply. Let's get started with the first hint. Go ahead with the slides. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. How are, uh, how are like, are we, do we have to like lock in our answers or like how will we, you guys know when? Like, please, when please, please raise one hand in the camera once you are finished. Okay. And. First, first clue for five points. In early fall, this Northern European country, the largest producer of mink fur, experienced a new mutation of the coronavirus spreading throughout its mink population. Are you gonna repeat the question? In early fall, this Northern European country, the largest producer of mink fur, experienced a new mutation of the coronavirus spreading throughout its mink population. And that is time. Does anyone want to lock their answers? Yes, I would like to lock my answers. Yeah, me too. I have an answer too. So, so yeah. Mish, Max, and Ashmith would like to lock their answers. All right, let's move on to the next, the next hint. Second hint for four points. This country's largest lake, Arizo, is situated northwest of its own capital city. This country's largest lake, Arizo, is situated northwest of its own capital city. And that is time. Does anyone want to lock their answers? I want to lock. Caleb likes to lock. Harry, would you like? Uh, I, want... I would like to lock. Wait, am I supposed to write down my answer right now? Yeah, yeah just okay. do it right now. Uh, I, I want to lock. Okay, Nermal would like to lock too. Okay, so everybody is locked. Um, we're going to... Skip the rest of the hints since everybody is locked. Uh, go to the end of the slides. And all right, so the correct answer was Denmark. Um, could you please show your show your answers? Camera now. So Max had Denmark, Nirma had Denmark, Caleb had Denmark, Ashmith had Denmark. Um, let's see, and Anish had Denmark, and what do we have? Norway, okay. So everybody got that question correct, except for Harry. So, all right, just a second. All right, let's take a look at the standings now. And we see that currently Max has moved himself out of the drop zone. We're now going to move on to round 14. Round 14 is called world relations. This is a common question, so get your writing devices out. Tensions between the United States and China have been rising in the past few years due to continued economic sanctions, accusations of spying and stealing. This round will test your knowledge on international relations that have a connection with geography. Remember again that you will have 12 seconds to write down your answer as after I repeat the question. A correct answer will be worth two points. Here is the question. The owner of ByteDance, a company best known for the popular app TikTok, was born in the city of Longyan during 1983. 
The city of Longyan, established by the once powerful Tang Dynasty, is located in what Chinese province that surrounds the Taiwanese governed island of Kinmen? I repeat, the owner of ByteDance, a company best known for the popular app TikTok, was born in the city of Longyan during 1983. The city of Longyan, established by the once powerful Tang Dynasty, is located in what Chinese province that surrounds the Taiwanese governed island of Kinmen? And that is time. Normal? Fujian province. Anish? It's very likely this answer is wrong, but Fujian. Caleb? Fujian. Harry? Fujian. Max? Fujian. Ashmith? Fujian. All right, the correct answer is Fujian. All right. All righty, let's take a look at the standings. You see that the standings have not changed. Everybody got that one right. Good job. Let's move on to round 15. This is the final round before we will eliminate two more of our contestants. Round 15 is called UNESCO World Heritage Site. UNESCO aims to promote world peace and security through the protection of nature, culture, education, and science. This round will test your knowledge of UNESCO World Heritage Sites and will consist of five different common questions. This will be the final round before we will eliminate two more contestants to our top four highest scores. Each question is worth two points for a total of 10 points during this round. Let's get started with the first question. This historic center of a major Latin American city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, especially known for its irregular urban layout that is isolated away from most major trading routes. Home to unique Spanish colonial architecture from over 400 years ago, this urban center is now located northwest of Las Tunas in the port of Manzanillo on which Caribbean island? I repeat, this historic center of a major Latin American city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, especially known for its irregular urban layout that is isolated away from most major trading routes. Home to unique Spanish colonial architecture from over 400 years ago, this urban center is now located northwest of Las Tunas in the port of Manzanillo on which Caribbean island? You have 12 seconds. All right, that's time. Please share your answers. Normal. Of the Dominican Republic. Okay. Next up is Anish. Cuba. I wrote Cuba. Kayla. Cuba. Harry. Havana. Max. Huh? Uh, could you repeat your answer, please? Cuba. Okay. Ashmith. Espanola. All right. The correct answer for two points is Cuba. So about half of you got that one right. I'm going to move on to question number two. The Gobustan rock, rock art landscape contains an outstanding collection of more than 6,000 rock engravings bearing testimony to over 40,000 years of rock art. Located northeast of the town of Shirvan, the site is situated near the southern limit of what mountain range? Again, the Gobustan rock art landscape contains an outstanding collection of more than 6,000 rock engravings bearing testimony to over 40,000 years of rock art. Located northeast of the town of Shirvan, the site is situated near the southern limit of what mountain range?
All right, that's time. Nirmal, what's your answer? Caucasus Mountains. Anish? Caucasus Mountains. Kayla? Caucasus. Harry? Caucasus. Max? Caucasus. And Ashmith? Caucasus Mountains. All right, the correct answer is the Caucasus Mountains. Everybody got that one correct. Good job. On to question three now. A ruined Khmer Hindu complex at the base of Mount Fukau, the temple of Vat Pho dates back to the early 5th century where it, where it was annexed by the Chenla, Champa, and Khmer kingdoms throughout history. The temple of Vat Phu is located just south of Pakshe along the western boundary of what plateau that forms a significant portion, a significant portion of the Champasak province. Again, a ruined Khmer Hindu complex at the base of Mount Phu Khao, the temple of Vat Phu dates back to the early 5th century where it was annexed by the Chenla, Champa, and Khmer kingdoms throughout history. The temple of Vat Phu is located just south of Pakshe along the western boundary of Wat Plateau that forms a significant portion of the Champasak province. You'll have 12 seconds. That's time. Please share your answers. Normal. The bowl of Okay. Anish. Love and plateau. Caleb. Caleb. The bowl of plateau. Okay. Um. Harry. The correct plateau. Max. Olivin and Ashmith. I tell Jar. Okay. The correct answer for two points is the Bolaven Plateau. So, again, most of you got that one correct. Good job. We're going to move on to question four now. Surtsey, an island that formed from an underwater eruption in 1963 is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that recorded over 85 species of birds, as well as 335 species of invertebrate over the past 50 years. This island is part of what archipelago off the coast of Iceland? Again, Surtsey, an island that formed from an underwater eruption in 1963 as a UNESCO World Heritage Site that recorded over 85 species of birds, as well as 335 species of invertebrate over the past 50 years. This island is part of what archipelago off the coast of Iceland? All right, that's time. Please share your answers. Normal. The Vestmania Jar Islands. Okay. Niche. Vestmania Archipelago. Caleb. I wrote Volcano Island. Okay. Harry. No idea, so I wrote Grimsey. Okay. Max. Like Ray Kions. Okay. And Ashmith. Westman Islands. All right. The correct answer for two points is Westman Nature or the Westman Islands. So good job. We're going to move on to the final question for this round now. Known as the gateway to the desert, as the, known as the gateway to the desert, this city was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its important location at a crossroads between the principal trading routes of the Trans-Saharan trade, trade Network. Located about halfway between Arlet and Zinder, 
What is the name of this large oasis city? I repeat, known as the gateway to this desert. Anish, could you please put your hands in the view of the camera, please? Okay, and tilt your camera down. Okay, known as the gateway to, this, to the desert, the city was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its important location at a crossroads between the principal trading routes of the Trans-Saharan Trade Network. Located about halfway between Arlet and Zinder, what is the name of this large oasis city? That is time to share your answers. Normal. A gutter. Okay. Uh, Anish. Now. Okay. Caleb. Agadez. Harry. Harry. Now. Okay. Max. Agadez. Uh, could you repeat your answer? All good, guys. Okay. And Ashmith. Marathi. Okay. The correct answer for two points is Agadez. So we'll see. Uh, Normal, you said Agadar. Uh, we'll see. Um, sorry, we cannot count Agadar because uh, when you do search it up, it's closer to Agadir. So yeah, I know. Like I forgot our, I, I forgot Agadez. So like I just kept Agador. Sorry about that. So uh Warren. Yes, Caleb. Can you, can you check the message I sent you? Okay, all right, just a second. Let's move on to the standings now. Let's see where things stand. So at the conclusion of round 15. Nirmal, Caleb, Ashmith, and Max are going to move on to the Geo Elite round. Anish and Harry, thank you so much for participating. You've done so well. Congratulations for finishing in fifth and sixth place, respectively. A great effort. We're going to take another short break, but we will be back before round 16 in the Geo Elite Geography Tournament. Stay tuned. Okay. And we're back. Let's now give a hand to our top four contestants who will move on to the Geo Initiative round. All right. And we'll start round 16. Welcome finalists to the Geo Elite round. The Geo Elite round will consist of a series of six unique geographic questions. During this round, point values will increase with how many questions you get correct in a row. For example, your first question correct in a row will earn you one point. A second question correct in a row will earn you another two points for a total of three points. And a third question will earn you another three points for a total of six points, and so on and so forth. However, a wrong answer will deduct two points from your score and will end your answer streak. So you will have to start all over again. For the rules, you will have 12 seconds to write down your answer to each question. And when I call time, each of you must show your answer in the camera immediately. Remember that this is a common question round, so answer every single question, even if you don't think you know the answer. At the conclusion of round 16, we will take a look at the total of our finalist scores and the top two contestants with the highest scores will advance to the championship round for the chance to become this winner's Geo Elite Geography Tournament champion. Let's get started again with the first question. I have a question. So yes. you said that uh, an incorrect answer deducts two points. So does that mean that if we uh, don't want to, we can choose not to answer it, or we have to, or a blank answer will count as a deduction as well? So a blank answer will also deduct two points from your score because okay. it's exactly a wrong answer. Now on to the first question. The Victoria's rifle bird, which resides within its habitat year-round, is known for its unique mating dance in which it tries to attack, attract female members of its species. The Victoria's rifle bird, known to the Yidinji tribe as the Duwu Duwu, 
is endemic to the Atherton Tableland. At which location number on this world map does the Victoria's Rifle Bird reside? I repeat, the Victoria's Rifle Bird, which resides within its habitat year round, is known for its unique mating dance in which it tries to attract female members of its species. The Victoria's Rifle Bird, known to the Yadidji tribe as the Duwu Duwu, is endemic to the Atherton Tableland. At which location number on this world map does the Victoria's Rifle Bird reside? And that is time. Nirmal? I have three. Anish? Oh, wait. Uh, Anish is eliminated. Uh, Caleb? Three. Max? Three. And Ashmit? Three. The correct answer is three. Everybody got it right. Second question. One of the two main subgenres of Indian classical music, Carnatic music, includes the basic elements of Shruti, Swara, Raga, and Tala. This music is played by inhabitants of southern India, including what ethnic group that dominates the coastal territory along both banks of the Palk Strait? I repeat, one of the two main subgenres of Indian classical music, Carnatic music, includes the basic elements of Shruti, Swara, Raga, and Tala. This music is played by inhabitants of southern India, including what ethnic group that dominates the coastal territory along both banks of the Palk Strait? And that is time. Nirmal? Nirmal. Caleb? Amal. Max? Amal. And Ashmet? Tamil. Everybody got it right again. It is Tamil. Third question. The Ragamuffin War, a Republican uprising in southern Brazil led by Generals Bento Gonçalves da Silva and Antonio de Souza Neto, was one of the longest and bloodiest conflicts in Brazilian history. This war, which ended in 1845, began with a confrontation in what city on the eastern shore of Lake Guiaba, the largest Brazilian city south of the Uruguay River. I repeat, the Ragamuffin War, a Republican uprising in southern Brazil, led by Generals Bento Gonçalves da Silva and Antonio de Souza Neto, was one of the longest and bloodiest conflicts in Brazilian history. This war, which ended in 1845, began with a confrontation in what city on the eastern shore of Lake Guiaba, the largest Brazilian city south of the Uruguay River? And that is time. Nirmal? Montevideo. Caleb? Porto Alegre. Max? Cuyaba. And Ashmet? Porto Alegre. Two of you got it correct. It is Porto Alegre. Wait, I have a question. Yes? Uh, the question states that the largest city south of the Uruguay River is it? Um... As in the question, it said largest Brazilian city south of the Uruguay River. Is Port Alegre like north of the Uruguay River? Um, so the Uruguay River flows partially north of Porto Alegre, and it was Brazilian. So uh, technically, there's no place in Brazil that's actually south of it. However, it does form um, over it, which means that there are cities south of the Uruguay River that uh, near its source, so uh, that's why it's Porto Alegre. Now on to the fourth question. The great Karas Mountains, reaching their peak at Mount Schroffenstein, are one of the driest places in the continent of Africa, 
receiving only minimal rainfall every year. Part of the arid Karas region, the Great Karas Mountains are located in what southern African country? I repeat, the Great Karas Mountains, reaching their peak at Mount Schroffenstein, are one of the driest places in the continent of Africa, receiving only minimal rainfall every year. Part of the arid Karas region, the Great Karas Mountains are located in what southern African country? And that is time. Nirmal? Namibia. Caleb? Namibia. Max? Oh, let's see too. Namibia. The correct answer is Namibia. Almost all of you got it right. Question five. Hadra Mautic, the easternmost of four known languages in a Semitic subgroup, was once spoken by the powerful Hadramite people who controlled the frankincense trade via their ancient trading post of Sumharum now known as Korori. This frankincense was shipped from the ancient ports of Kana and Mrt, now located on the present day northern shore of what large gulf? I repeat, Hadra Mautic, the easternmost of four known languages in a Semitic subgroup, was once spoken by the powerful Hadramite people who controlled the frankincense trade via their ancient trading post of Sumharum, now known as Korori. This frankincense was shipped from the ancient ports of Kana and Mrt, now located on the present day northern shore of what large gulf? And that is time. Nirmal? Gulf of Amman. Caleb? Persian Gulf. Max? Gulf of Aden. And Ashmet? Gulf of Aden. The correct answer is the Gulf of Aden. Final question. Emilio Palma, the very first documented person to be born in Antarctica, was born at Esperanza Base on Hope Bay. Located at the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, this bay is situated between the Weddell Sea and what other large sea? I repeat, Emilio Palma, the very first documented person to be born in Antarctica, was born at Esperanza Base on Hope Bay. Located at the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, this bay is situated between the Weddell Sea and what other large sea? And that is time. Nirmal? The Bell and Sea. Caleb? Ross, the Ross Sea. Max? Ellen Halson. And Ashman? Bell and Sea. The correct answer is actually the Scotia Sea. So that concludes the Geo Elite round. All right. Let's take a look at the standings for the final time. And we can see that Nirmal and Max occupy the danger zone, which means Ashmith and Caleb will advance to the championship round. Great job. And that ends the last question for the Geo Elite round. Good job, guys. All of you have made it this far already. To our top two, that means congratulations. You'll be moving on to the championship round. We're going to take another short break now, but we will be back with our top two finalists. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We have been narrowed down to our top two finalists. We're going to move on to the championship round to determine who will be this winter's Geo Elite Geography Tournament champion. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the championship round for this winter's Geo Elite Geography Tournament. 
We have officially narrowed down our top 10 contestants to the final two. Congratulations. In this round, both of you will be given three common questions and your scores will be reset prior to the round. You'll be given 12 seconds after I repeat each question once. So um, write down your answers after I repeat the question. At the end of the third question, the student with the highest score will be declared the champion of the second ever GeoLeague Geography Tournament. You ready, guys? Let's get started. Here is the first question. The Kobar Tower bombings of 1996 caused by a car bomb explosion that killed 19 people and injured hundreds more took place near the headquarters of which Asian country's national oil company? I repeat, the Kobar Tower bombings of 1996 caused by a car bomb explosion that killed 19 people and injured hundreds more took place near the headquarters of which Asian country's national oil company? All right, that's time. Please show your answers. Caleb, what do you have? I have Malaysia. Okay. And Ashmith, what do you have? Saudi Arabia. The correct answer for one point is Saudi Arabia. So Ash <sighs> takes the lead here. We're going to, all right. All right. So Ashmith takes the lead from our first question. We're going to move on to question two now. The only Brazilian state with a cross on its flag contains the volcanic Fernando de Noronha archipelago within the Atlantic Ocean. Name this coastal state whose southwestern boundary is formed by the São Francisco River. I repeat, the only Brazilian state with a cross on its flag contains the volcanic Fernando de Noronha archipelago within the Atlantic Ocean. Name this coastal state whose southwestern boundary is formed by the San Francisco River. That is time. Please share your answers. Caleb, what do you have? It's Sierra. Ashmith. Oh, yeah. The correct answer for one point is Pernambuco. So both of you got that one wrong. All right, we're going to move on to question three now. This decides it all. Can Ashmith hold on or will Caleb equalize? Jawi, a style of script that is related to writing systems such, such as Shawar Jing is used to convert the written text of other languages into the Perso Arabic script. Jawi is used to convert Malaysian in the language of Banjaris, which is spoken in the cities of Banjarmasin and Banjarbaru. In what coastal Indonesian province that lies along the northern boundary of the Java Sea? I repeat, Jawi, a style of script that is related to writing systems such as Shawar Jing is used to convert the written text of other languages into the Perso-Arabic script. Jawi is used to convert Malaysian in the language of Banjaris, which is spoken in the cities of Banjarmasin and Banjarbaru in what coastal Indonesian province that lies along the northern boundary of the Java Sea. All right, that's time. Caleb, please show your answer. Well, South Kalimantan. Okay, Caleb at South Kalimantan. Ashmith, what do you have? Also have South Kalimantan. And the correct answer is 
South Kalimantan, which means Ashmith is the champion of the GeoLeak Geography Tournament. Well done. Good job. Ashmith. Congratulations. Good job, Caleb. To our runner up, Caleb Hines from Virginia, who has made it this far as well into the top two finals. Let's go to the congratulations slide. And applause to all our top 10 finalists, as well as all our elimination round competitors and everyone that has participated in this winter's Geo Elite Geography Tournament. Let's take a look at the final standings. You can go to that slide. Congratulations to all our competitors. Remember that you can email us at geoeliteteam at gmail.com for any questions you may have, or if you would like to sign up for the next GeoElite Geography Tournament. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and don't forget to sign up for the GeoEd Retreat in February. Thanks a bunch, and keep studying.